In the next 10-ish minutes or so, I'm going to share with you the mindset shift I had to make in order to become a millionaire in my 20s. What's up, what's going on? My name's Vena. I'm 22 years old and I make my living working as a real estate agent and a real estate wholesaler here in Seattle. And I invest in real estate in order to set myself up for the future. I'm in the thick of it. I document my journey on this channel. My goal is to create a million dollars in real estate equity alone by buying fixer houses, fixing them up, bringing them to a new value, and then refinancing my investment back to do it again and again and again. I started this journey when I was 18. I skipped college college to go into real estate full time with the goal of eventually buying property to keep and hold long term so that my rental properties would pay for my lifestyle and I would have the option to work or not work. It's going great so far. I'm enjoying the ride. If you've been watching me for a while, you know about all the projects I do and big deals and the checks and everything. And I share exactly how to do everything I do on this channel. And so today I really, really want to hone in on what I believe is the most important thing overall in real estate and just life in general and achieving anything you want to achieve. It is your mindset. The difference between rich people and poor people is 100% how they think. I have spent a lot of time around rich people. I pay a lot of money to hang out with them. And what I've learned is that rich people think very, very differently than the average person. It's literally a different hardwire. And when I say poor people, I don't mean poor in financial status. I mean poor in mindset because poor is not a financial status. Broke is a financial status. You can be broke with a rich mindset, but you can't be poor with rich mindset. So at 18 years old, how did I make the switch from poor mindset to rich mindset so that by 22, I could be achieving all the goals I set for myself and still leveling up to live an even better life. Let's talk about it. So like I said, rich people think very differently. And I do think there are two categories of thinking differently. I think there's a one on financial knowledge, right? Rich and wealthy people just understand how to better use the system in order to create income and invest it. And then there's a side of like how to actually think and process information and conduct your habits and lifestyle that they use to build the discipline plan to take the financial information into action and actually create the result. And the information part is easy. There are so many free resources online between YouTube and blogs and TikTok and books. The information is all out there, but how do we actually get over our limiting beliefs and all the obstacles that are holding us back in our daily life in order to marry the two and create the life we want? My number one thing that got me into the millionaire mindset, if you will, is taking ownership in your life. I started in this game at a very young age. I still remember four years later, Later, how much time and mental effort it took to decide between going to college and just doing real estate. Because society, this external thing was pounding on me hard. Go to college, go get a good job, lead a normal life, work for 40, 50 years, and then retire when you're 65. When I was considering real estate, I knew that it was a sales job. I knew that it was gonna be hard to get into, that the money you make is 100% up to you. It's not consistent. You have to be good at talking to people. And at the end of the day, I realized that there were a lot of cons to working and pursuing doing the corporate lifestyle. First of all, and I'm gonna try not to turn this into a rant about college, but college doesn't even guarantee you a real job. And even if you do get a real job, your income is capped. That scared the shit out of me. Even though I knew that there was a lot of improvement that I would need to go through in order to get into real estate, and I probably didn't even know like how much improvement until I actually got into it, you know? But even though I had a lot of fear and limiting beliefs holding me back from getting into real estate, I decided that I would rather take the plunge and take the hard way and kind of take that risk in order to pursue this yellow brick road of freedom option and choice that real estate provides. You have an uncapped income, you get to learn about the industry, and ultimately I wanted to buy rental property to retire off of, so what better industry to work in? That's why I chose real estate. I knew I would have to get over these limiting beliefs, but in the end, I really freaking wanted it, so I went for it. And I took ownership of the fact that it wasn't gonna be easy and I would have to get myself up out of bed every day because you're working for yourself. You're not clocking in, there's no hours you're expected to be there. The corporate system is just that, it's very systemized. And it reels you in because it makes your life easy. You get to live on autopilot. But again, in order to pursue what I really wanted in the end, I took ownership of the fact that I would have to go through this shit, learn, improve as a person in order to get there. And when I got into this business, it took me like six months to make my first check. I was terrified. I didn't know shit about mindset, real estate sales, the technicals, how to help someone buy or sell a house. I didn't know any of that. I'm gonna tell you guys why. I've mentioned this before, literal light bulb moment for me. I went to a Tom Ferry real estate summit and regular ass people were up on that stage talking about how they make a million dollars a year, just casual. And I was just sitting in the audience at 16, 17 years old, like, okay, if this person can do it, I can do it. And that's it. Everything that was holding me back, 
I'm shy, I don't want to talk to people, I don't want to be rejected, I don't know how to sell. All of these could be fixed. These are not conditions. These are my personal objections based on fears I had. And the way I got over all these things was, again, I wanted the end goal enough that I was willing to work through them. And I just questioned myself on every single one. What is going to help me get over this fear or this limiting belief? Especially after I got into coaching, I realized that these are not really special excuses. Everybody goes through these things and there are solutions for each of them. So since I was shy, I started making videos online. Since I was scared of rejection, I just kept thinking of ways that the rejection on the phones and in sales was not about me. It was either the way I was presenting or maybe they were just having a bad day or they just don't want what I'm selling and that's fine. I didn't know anything about sales when I started and that was as simple as turning on an audiobook every morning when I was going to the gym. Zig Ziglar, Jim Rohn, all the OGs, I just looked up sales book and I found my resources. I learned that proactivity goes very far and again, anything you're going through is not not special I'm sorry like you could be going through some deep shit it's probably not special and it's probably not something you can't get over and if you're anything like me and you want to live a life where you can just do whatever you want whether it's traveling or doing the hobbies you like to do spending more time with your family your friends your loved ones whatever it is that defines a fulfilling life to you if you want it enough you will take ownership and get over all this bullshit that's holding you back so that's number one <laughs> take ownership of your life I really wanted to be thorough about that because number two is having a growth mindset so kind of piggybacking on that, you know, I had all these things that were holding me back and I still have things that hold me back. I still have bad days. I still have seasons where I'm beating myself up and comparing myself to other people and feeling like I should be way further ahead than I am. But the way around that is having a growth mindset. So being able to catch yourself when you're having these bad days and these bad moments, when you're really down on yourself, you're beating yourself up internally. I am notorious for being a bitch to myself, but I got really good at catching myself in the middle of the negative self-talk and just being like, like, um, this is not good for my mindset, which is not good for reaching my end goals. So what the hell? What do I need to tell myself or what resource do I need to listen to in order to move on and get back into action? Because I definitely have my times where things are just going wrong left and right, or I haven't made a check in a while, or business is super slow, or the lead source that I'm trying to pursue isn't working, not moving towards close to our goals, all these things that trip us up in the business, I freeze. A lot of people react differently, but I just don't do anything when I feel like I'm in a rut, which is extremely counterintuitive because how are you supposed to get out of a rut if you're not moving, right? But I can't help it sometimes, and that's where having a growth mindset is really important. So one of my strategies now is if I catch myself having like a really bad attitude, like I feel like things aren't going my way or the universe isn't working for me or my results aren't happening fast enough, I have a playlist on YouTube called Get Your Shit Together with all of my favorite YouTube videos by all of my favorite gurus. It's public, so you can check it out. And I go through the playlist. One of my favorite videos ever is called Diseases of Attitude by Jim Rohn. I basically have it memorized to the point where I turn it on. I'm like speaking with him, but he kind of talks about being passionate about what you do and taking risks in your business because if you don't, nothing's going to happen. And Jim Rohn is just a great speaker that listening to him really inspires me. So even if I'm feeling the worst of the worst, I will basically force myself to listen to this playlist. And for the most part, it always helps. It grounds me back to why I do what I do. And it helps me get that spurt of action or motivation or whatever you want to call it that I need to move forward. So growth mindset, you're always learning and growing, especially when you don't feel like it. You're seeking out the resources to help you become a better person. I've had my fair share of letting ego take over. Like when I made my first couple hundred thousand dollars, I thought I was a shit. I was like 20 years old. I was like, I'm better than everyone. And I made my goal to become like the number one real estate agent in Washington which was so stupid because why would I hyper fixate on becoming the number one agent when that has nothing to do with my original goals to travel, have a family, do whatever I want with my time. That has nothing to do with being number one. That was all just status and ego. So humility is important and staying grounded to what you truly want. That's really just gonna help you on your path to happiness and freedom. But yeah, that's probably a whole different topic as far as preserving that happiness and freedom. But mindset, growth, get better always. All right, and then number three to wrap this up because I wanna share with you guys some ways to implement these things and actually work on getting your mindset up. This was the hardest one for me to learn. No matter what kind of journey you're on, but I would say especially if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a business owner, if you're out there on your own, doing your thing, working for yourself, you have to enjoy the journey. This one was so hard for me because it hurt to go to work for that first six months and not get any result out of it. You know, in 
hindsight, looking back, I was super, super frustrated every day, but I'm like, it was your first six months. What do you expect? A million dollars, right? And that probably has something to do with how Reels look so flashy online and blah, blah. But during that first few months, I was just frustrated. And then even after that, even after I made my first few hundred thousand, I bought my first house and all of these things that were on the trajectory to where I wanted to go. When it slowed down or when that trajectory started becoming inconsistent, those are the times that it's very hard to enjoy the journey. I just want to skip to the end, right? Like I'll have my seasons where I'm like, oh my God, I've been working so hard for months and months and months. When is it my turn, right? Plus the ego wants to take over. It wants to quit to tell you that it's not for you and you should just do something else. But you have to remember, and this is me preaching to myself, that these are the best days. These are the days we're gonna look back on in 10 or 20 years when we were hustling our way and how we got over all the setbacks we faced and we never lost sight of the end goal. I think being unhappy with the journey has a lot to do with impatience, a lot to do with not having hope. You have to believe that your end goal is possible, that it's going to happen no matter what, as long as you're on the path and taking the step there. I think the biggest thing for me is I would lose hope. If it's been a long time since I made money or, or I didn't reach the arbitrary date goal that I set for myself to buy a house or whatever it was, it felt like I was moving away from the life I wanted. But here's the thing, if I say I wanna buy my next rental property by December, 2023, and it doesn't happen, am I gonna have a mental breakdown in December, 2023? If I wasn't enjoying the journey, I would because I didn't set the goal that I set for myself that I felt like I could accomplish at the time and now I didn't do it. I'll feel like a failure. But if I'm enjoying the journey and I didn't buy a property by December, 2023, that's okay. The universe has something in store for me. It might come in January, 2024. Am I gonna complain about that? Absolutely not. I believe the universe does work in mysterious ways. And honestly, and this is my biggest lesson, letting go of all of these expectations you have for the universe and just going to work and doing your thing and providing value to other people, that is how you align to the universe so that you do get what you want. You can declare to the universe what you want and when you want it. And swear to God, if you're in alignment, you're doing your thing, following the plan you created, it will happen. It's really not my most logic-based advice or belief, but I have found this to be true in the last four years working in real estate. Instead of grinding to force the outcome and force everything you want, let go, follow your plan, enjoy the journey, do your thing, and it will come. That is the mindset that you need to have if you wanna create wealth in your life. So lots of stuff. This is really my mindset in a nutshell. This is how I think and go about my life. I honestly think about these things every day because I realize when you are working on leveling up in your life, you really need to do 90% of your work up here. The biggest things to practice and develop a millionaire mindset are to learn every day, all the time, read, listen, ask people questions, hang out with other people who have this mindset or are working towards it. Because there's power in numbers and there's power in being very picky about the people who are close closest to you. If you hang out with losers all the time, you are going to be a loser. If you hang out with rich people all the time, there is no way you don't become rich. If the three to four people closest to you are making a ton of money and you see them all the time, how are you not going to become like them? You ever notice that you're really similar to your best friends? If the three to four people closest to you are building their businesses, making money all the time and living the life they want to live, how would you not? And always, always remember, I think this is another one of the biggest things that helped me develop my mindset is that L is for learning. This is the biggest thing people fear and I think it's fucking ridiculous because mistakes are not failure. Mistakes are feedback. If you make a mistake, you just learn not to do that thing again. You just got one step closer to your ultimate end goal because you know now not to do that thing again. How hard is that to understand? I think people who say they're afraid of failure are more afraid of success than failure and being afraid of success just means you're either scared of losing the thing that you're achieving or you're not gonna know what to do after, but it's mostly that you're scared that you're gonna lose the thing that you got. So embrace failure, you're gonna make mistakes. Like how would you not make mistakes? It's impossible to not make mistakes. You're not God. <laughs> Try those things out. If you can just get 1% better every single day, just get a little better in your mindset and your education and your growth every single day, there's no way you don't achieve. And with that cheesy line, we'll finish up there. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to hear from you on this topic. If this video helped you, like and subscribe so I can keep posting more stuff like this. Best of luck, go get that money or whatever you need to live the life you want. I will see you in the next one.